So Robinhood just launched their new Web 3.0 wallet that will house your NFTs and crypto, and you know what that means. Grab your pitchforks about how untrustworthy they are and you should never use Robinhood because they are evil. Now, despite the criticism of some people, this app was released to a waitlist of more than a million people. It's been downloaded in over 130 countries and people are really excited to use it. It's now available worldwide and I'm gonna reserve my opinion towards the end of the video if you wanna see that. But in the meantime, I wanna give you a basic overview of what this app is who it's for, how to use it. I'll show you step by step, it's super easy. And then I'll show you some of the downsides and risks if you decide to use it. So this is a completely separate app from the main Robinhood app that you might have on your phone already called Wallet. Now, if you're an iOS user, you can download this app right now, but if you're on Android, press F to pay respects because the support will come later, just like free trading in the UK in Q1 of 2020. The reason why people are so excited about this app is because it uses the Ethereum and Polygon chains to house a non-custodial wallet. Now in crypto, there are two different types of wallets. There's a custodial wallet and a non-custodial wallet. A custodial wallet is where another company, like Robinhood in this case, in their main app, houses your private keys. They control it. That means they have the passwords and access to your money. The benefit of a custodial wallet is that you don't have to worry about backing up your accounts and passwords because that's already done for you. But the downside is you lose full control over your crypto and all the things you can do with it. Now this new app, Wallet, is considered a non-custodial wallet because it's you and you alone that has access to your private keys. Now some of the things this app can do are house Ethereum and Polygon assets and tokens, you can own crypto and swap between crypto, and you can even connect to dApps or decentralized apps. Some examples of this would be things like DeFi, staking to receive rewards, NFTs, and Web3 gaming. At the end of the day, neither one is better. People like to argue that having a non-custodial wallet is the better version because it gives us full control and that's partially true true, but I also like to think of it kind of like running. Some people like to run indoors from the comfort and safety of their own home on a treadmill, and some people like to have the freedom of running outside. If this was that analogy, this wallet app is the running outside version. Now let me give you a walkthrough of how to actually use the app and what it looks like, and I'll give you my thoughts at the end. So with that said, let's get into it. Hi, my name is Andre Jick. Hope you're doing well, come for the finance, and stay for the crypto. Here we go again. So first, a full disclosure, this is not a sponsored video. I was not paid to make this tutorial or this review. This is my very own unpaid and unprofessional opinion. So let's bust out our phones and I'll show you exactly how to use it. Once you download the app, you can either import your wallet from Robinhood or just create a new wallet. Now I created a new one because I don't have one on Robinhood, but at this point you can either manually back up your private key, which is recommended, or just back it up through the cloud. I just backed it up through the cloud because I don't have any assets. I'll show you how to get some in a second, but if you plan on keeping a substantial amount of money on this app, please back up your private key manually. So the app itself looks really close to Robinhood if you ever used it with a couple differences, but the first thing we wanna do before using the app itself is go to the main page of the app and in the upper left-hand corner, click the three horizontal lines and then click the second option down, backups and security. Super important because here, where the green check mark is, where my receiving address is that's backed up to the cloud, I'm gonna click on that and there's a little pop-up that comes up from the bottom that says view recovery phrase. So I'm gonna do that. And at this point in time, this little gray box, once I tap that, it's gonna show my private key. And it's made up of 12 random words that you should write down and then keep it secret and keep it safe. So that is the most important part of setting up the app. And now let me show you how to transfer some of the assets onto the wallet. In the main part of the wallet app, there's two different ways to send and receive crypto and NFTs. The first way, really easy, click in the upper left-hand corner with the three horizontal lines and then just click receive, super simple. The second way is from the main screen, click on the bottom square icon and then at the top, tap to the right and that's the receive, same exact page. Now, at this point, you wanna click at the bottom there where you see the little strings of letters and numbers. Make sure that when you click it, you see that green little arrow pop up. That's when you know you've copied it over. Now, at this point in time, this is the address you want to paste into wherever you're sending from. So for example, I have a couple NFTs that I wanna send from OpenSea. Don't judge me for doing this, I'm a crypto boomer, but whenever it comes to crypto stuff, I've always used my laptop because I wanna see the whole thing of strings of letters and numbers much more clearly. And I know some people like to do everything on their phone, but I need to involve my laptop, so I'm doing this hybrid dance, but here's what I do. First, I text myself that receiving address that I just got from Robinhood to myself. So I just paste it 
into my own messages app on my phone. Now that text will pop up on my laptop in the messages app on my laptop. So now I have it for future reference. What I'm gonna do from this point on is get to my laptop and go to opensea.io and then I'm gonna connect to my MetaMask wallet so I can see all my NFTs. So I'm just gonna pick this one to send over as a test and now I have to make sure that this specific NFT is compatible with either Polygon or Ethereum. So how can you tell, right? The easy way to tell is if you click on the hyperlink right here, it'll take you to the project homepage. And right underneath the banner, you should be able to see exactly what chain this NFT is on. So I can see right now it's on Ethereum, so it's compatible. I know it's going to work with the wallet app. It's not gonna get lost forever. So now you can click on the paper airplane icon in OpenSea, and then it'll ask where to transfer. So it's inside of this little box that I'm going to paste from my messages app, that address I got from the Robinhood wallet. That is my receiving address. This is where the NFT is going. Never, ever type it up manually like zero X, trying to match up all of the letters and numbers because people have lost millions of dollars trying to do this themselves. Always copy and paste. Just cross-reference the first few digits and numbers and the last few, and once you're happy that they're perfectly matched up, then you can transfer. Now, as of right now, the Wallet app does not charge any fees to use it, but the crypto network does. So, of course, if you wanna send and receive, Ethereum right now is charging me a gas fee of $5, which is definitely a lot, but that's just the reality of using Ethereum when people are using it. Now, once you confirm the transaction on the MetaMask wallet though, it actually took roughly three seconds before the NFT showed up in the wallet. It's really fast. Now, unfortunately, the app is not showing my NFT's hypothetical value. And maybe that's because it's really hard to figure out what this thing is truly worth, and maybe it's not worth anything at all, but I would argue that at least including the floor value might be a cool feature. And and if we could toggle on or off the inclusion of NFT values into the portfolio, that might be another cool feature for the future. That's all there is to the app. And before you decide to use it, there's a couple downsides and a few risks that you might wanna consider first. The first is that like any other alternative investment product, this is not a regulated territory. And here's what I mean. If you go to the main part of the app and you scroll down to legal disclosures, you'll see in the second line, it says that it's offered through Robinhood Non-Custodial Limited, which is a company organized in the Cayman Islands. Now, anytime you read money plus Cayman Islands, just know that we're not gonna get our money back if something was to go down. Now, the main Robinhood app is insured, but this wallet, which is a separate product under a separate company, is not. Now, even though I want you to know this, I'm not implying that because it is not regulated that it must mean it's sketchy, because all alternative investments, including art and crypto and cars and Pokemon cards and watches and anything you like to collect is not regulated and it's not meant to be FDIC insured and SIPC protected. So I want you to know this, but I'm not saying that it's sketchy or that it's inherently bad, but it does make it more risky. Now the part that does make me worry though is where it says availability may be subject to regulatory approval in certain jurisdictions. That's because in December of 2022, Robinhood got a subpoena over their crypto listings. And that's because right now, the government is trying to figure out which crypto is and is not a security. Remember how in Pirates of the Caribbean, or Caribbean, how do you pronounce that? Hello, Pirates, where Jack Sparrow started freaking out because he got the black spot from Bill Turner because he knew that Davy Jones was gonna come after him, you know, the guy with the tentacles? Well, being labeled a security in the world of crypto is almost like getting that black spot. Now, a security is nothing more than an investment of money in a common enterprise with the expectation of profit derived from the efforts of others. The four criteria that make up something called the Howey test. That's how you can tell whether something is or is not a security. Now, some examples of securities are things like stocks, bonds, mutual funds, ETFs, things we keep inside of our IRAs and 401ks. Those are examples of securities. It's not bad. So why is it being labeled a security in the crypto world such a bad thing? It isn't and it kind of is. It's bad because being labeled a security would require all crypto companies to register with the SEC, which would give the SEC an insane amount of power and say over what can and can't be done. Now, crypto obviously does not like asking for permission because it innovates at the speed of light. But the downside of this innovation is that FTX happens. Bad things can happen very quickly. The upside though is that crypto creates much better products much faster. But if you force them to go through red tape and make them pay fines, then obviously that slows down the rate of innovation. But the upside is that people get less hurt. They're protected. 
We protect them from pump and dumps and scammers, right? That's the idea. So being labeled a security is almost like having a speed limit put on crypto. So the SEC is like, guys, let's go 15 in a school zone and crypto's like 200 full cent. Now the guy at the top of the SEC, Uncle Gary Gensler, believes most of crypto, like 99% is unregistered securities that he should have say over. Now, because Robinhood is a massive entity that needs to comply with these rules, and they have a massive target on their back, that also means those future regulatory rules will be especially applied to them because they'll be watched closely under a microscope, which means all of those NFTs and tokens and cryptos that you keep in there could be stuck there for a while until the regulators decide what they will allow Robinhood to do or not. And I believe that this risk could extend to this wallet app because it is still attached to Robinhood at the end of the day. Now, this is just my opinion, and I could be totally wrong about this, but that might explain why Robinhood is not launching with the ability to send NFTs out of the wallet because they don't want to upset those regulators and because they have to work with them, which is still a risk. And I could be overthinking all of this, and maybe it's a small risk, but it's one I still think you should know about and maybe think twice before sending anything super valuable because it could be stuck there for a while. I'm really optimistic that we'll get sensible and good guidelines and protections from regulators for crypto in the future, but also not so sure if personally I would want to keep my crypto assets on a wallet from a company that is as high profile as Robinhood is because I'm afraid regulators might want to use them as an example to enforce their rules on in the future. And sure, rules apply to everyone, but I think some platforms and some wallets and some companies will be watched closer than others. And that's why there is a benefit to keeping your assets on a smaller, lesser known wallet, or maybe even a DEX, a decentralized exchange, but that also might mean more of a potential security risk, even though there's less regulatory risk. So there's always a compromise to be made somewhere unless you just wanna lock it away forever on a cold storage wallet and just forget about it, which is sort of what I've been doing and saying to do since June of last year. Either way, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Smash the like button, subscribe if you haven't already. Don't forget to grab your free stocks. Links are down below. Go track them automatically with the spreadsheet link down below in my Patreon. Love you. Thank you so much for watching this video. I'll see you back here Monday, Friday, sometimes Wednesday. See you soon. Bye-bye.